Glenn Seaton on pole for this one, courtesy of his victory in the last race. Tanda, Barguana and Murphy row two, Lowndes and Radisich row three, Bow and Kelly on row four. Stephen Ellery and Stephen Richards will start out of five. Rodney Forbes and Stephen Johnson in the Shell Falcon out of 12. Craig Baird and Mark Scaife, what a great drive that from the back of the grid up to 14th. Expect him in the top 10 by the end of this one. Paul Morris and Cameron McLean out of 16. A couple of other people to watch out for. Mark Larkham in this one. Watch Neil Crompton as well. Had some tyre troubles towards the end of race two. Further back, Trevor Ashby and Rod Nash on row 12. Brad Jones and Paul Wheel and all sorts of dramas in those races. Steve Reid, John Faulkner, Chris Smurden, Dougal McDougal, John Cotter and Cameron McConville in the Auto Pro car getting tangled up with Russell Ingle. And Ingle there starting from position 33, Tyler Mecklem and Anthony Tratt at the back of the field. Tratt has been in the wars today. Mecklem making his V8 supercar debut in the TDK. Commodore, here is John Bauer carrying our Be Clear and Simple onboard camera. In the Caterpillar Ford, we'll start from grid position seven. Glenn Seaton, can this man bring it home? There's the point situation. Tanda and Seaton tied on 76 points for the day, so whoever wins this will take top spot on the podium. But look at the battle for third. Bargwana, Lowndes and Murphy also equal on points. Whoever wins out of those three will take the third spot on the podium. So it's a real mystery at the moment who's going to stand on that top spot at the end of today. It was a long time between drinks for Seaton. The last one, his first race win since Simmons Plains in 98. Can he repeat it in the third and final race of the day? This is round eight of the championship. Away we go. Tanda makes a great start. Seaton like a lightning bolt off the line. Has got the line towards turn one for the first time. Barguana coming for the run. Tanda tucks into second place. So the Valvoline Cummins Commodores running second and third. Murphy into fourth place. Oh, for the Barguana sideways. <laughs> Everyone holds their breath as they come through the first number of corners. They've sorted themselves out though. Barguana. Oh, look at that. Bit of a tag on the back from the Kmart Commodore. The Valvoline Cummins machine has a bit of loose bodywork flapping off the back. As this big thundering field of V8s, there's one in trouble, Stephen Ellery, in the super cheap Autos Falcon. Well placed in race two, but he goes right to the back of the grid. What a shame for the Queensland-based outfit. Look at Seaton sideways on cold tyres as the field streams into Penrite corner for the first time. This infield section now, the Stratfield hairpin. Look at Tanda coming right into your living room once again as he tried to do in... The previous race. It looks like there's been a bit of a touch. Uh, you see the smoke coming there from uh, the rear left of um, Seaton's car. Well, it's the battle for top honours, as we said before this race started. Whoever wins out of these two, Tanda and Seaton will take top spot on the podium this afternoon. Now look at this, Paul Rose oh, down the inside. Wheel up in the air. Cameron McLean just drops a wheel off the edge of the track, gets it back on the racing line. So all sorts of action in the opening lap of Heat 3. Keep you posted on this one. A variety of outcomes could determine who is top of the podium at the end of the day. Look at Tanda having a quick look down there. I wonder if he made some sort of adjustment to the anti-roll bars. His teammate Barguana now right there with him. So too Greg Murphy. A trio of Commodores hounding down this sole forward out in front. Sort of an echo of Eastern Creek with Paul Radisich, wasn't it? At the front of the queue. Look at this heat now coming from Tanda as he looks up the inside of Glen Seaton. Barguana in there too. Murphy. In fourth, then it's Radisich, Lowndes, Bow, Richards, Kelly, all the way back to Forbes in tenth. Glenn Seaton defending hard in the front of this pack, Shell Helix replay. This is after the start, Baz. Yeah, it's a, who's that, John Faulkner? Faulkner, yeah. Not had a good day, the Victorian in the Asia Online Commodore. He rejoins the field. This is another look from up high on our cherry picker. Oh, there's a big tangle of cars, yeah, about three or four wide there. there. Yeah. They, just, they just won't go into there, that's two wide maximum. Yeah, this looks... Oh, that's, that's your touch with uh, yep. seat now. That's where the smoke's coming. Right near the pit entry road. So just giving Glenn a wake-up call as if you need oh, a one. Up the inside of Steve Stephen Johnson. Johnson. So he's continuing his charge toward the front. Glenn Seaton, though, he's leading this one. Fastest lap so far, 131.71. And the FTR Falcon up the inside oh, of Craig Baird. Baird. So Stephen Johnson getting hammered. Left, right, and centre. Tony Long has two in the second of the state. Someone's fun there, oh, Stephen Richards. Stephen, holy. Boy, oh boy, Glenn Seaton's gone off too, oh, apparently. Now, that, no. what if that's Greg Murphy that's gone off down there. Boy, oh boy, our race leader. That's Greg Murphy. So Murphy's in trouble as well. Bowers off, we're being told. This is mayhem at Winton. Oh, what's going on here? Someone now, Barguana, can you believe this? Last year's race winner. Oh, Tanner. Tanner's off too. Good 
the speed. Look at the wear on the track. There must have been some oil or something dropped yeah. there. Anyone's come off down at that corner. And Barguana, last year's race and round winner, has taken the lead. I still don't know where Seaton is. We saw him off the track. I'm not quite sure where. So all oh, hell's broken loose. I wonder if Seaton has gone off down near the pit entry road there. Look at the back of Barguana's thing hanging on. Well, this really mixes up. It's doing our sums up here now with the podium positions. It's all change. Now Jason Bagwana, beautifully positioned at the front of this pack. That puts Radisic up behind him. Let's have a look at this replay. This seat, he's back on the track, but he's lost a ton of positions. According to the pits, there is in fact a wall or some slippery surface on the track that has sent all those cars spearing off. Let's have a look at this on the replay. Whoa! Well, that was coming onto pit straight. Oh, look at everybody. So... Seaton spun it there coming onto pit straight, but a bit further down. This is a replay of that again. Garth. Oh, look at that. That's a good job by Garth Tanner there. Boy, oh boy, that could have been yeah. much worse than that. There's got to be oh, oil. Look at him. <laughs> there must be oil down on the track there. It's probably gone all the way down to turn one because we saw Bow and Tander off there as well. Goodness me. Chris Smurden in trouble. That's in the same place, Mark. Yeah, there must be something dropped on the track surface there. Lounge, though, makes a move. On Paul Radicic, that puts him up to second position. Radicic the third. Kelly in fourth. Forbes now moves up to fifth in the wins Commodore. Yes. Scaife in sixth. Can you believe this charge by our championship leader? Scaife now takes advantage of that little altercation. He's up in the top six. Get the calculators out. Boy, oh boy. Trying to determine who's going to be on top of the podium at the end of the day. I tell oh. you what, Barguan is not going to get this, this one up either. No he way. So badly wants to win. Well, once again, this is a battle for the top spot on the podium. Don't forget that Lowndes and Barguana were both tied for points for third. But now that Seaton and Tanner have come off, these two are battling for the overall win on the day. Barguana and Lowndes. Paul Radicic, highest place to the forwards at the moment. But a long way down in points today. Scaife is up in sixth place. <laughs> say it time and time again we've seen forwards in potential race winning situations and something always seems to go wrong and Glenn Seaton there staring down the barrel of Ford's first victory in 2000 just thrown it away well, certainly eager for that round win the FTR team they are pumped up here look at this Craig Lowndes sideways through the S's as he chases down Jason Barguana and Barks has got the no for your eyes on this is a no surrender approach 29-year-old former Sydney sider who now bases himself out of Melbourne. It's going to be interesting to see whose uh, tyres are in the best shape when we get sort of another five or six laps into it. It's going to be all over the show. Jason spent the week painting his house, thought it was a nice relaxing this, lead oh! into this round at Winter. Oh! Lounge! Oh, oh, look at it! But that was well held by Jace the face. That was... Uh, and Lounge, a big hit in the yeah, rear guard. that was a good whack, couldn't it? So now Valvoline Card drops back to second. He's under attack. Good save though from Barbara. So Lowndes is now standing on the top podium spot if he can bring it home ahead of Barbara. Tremendous battle for round eight of the Shell Championship Series. Paul Radisic, the fastest of the forwards at the moment. He's in the battle for the lead. Todd Kelly and the whole racing team Commodore behind this battle. Mark Scaife, yeah, up to fifth now. Rodney Forbes, a good effort also. Sixth position, Stephen Johnson to seventh. Tony Longhurst, eighth. Craig Baird, ninth. And Mark Larkham in the minor 10 Ford. Much needed effort for him up to 10. There he is on the back of this freight train. Here is Mark Scaife. Just got through on Todd Kelly. That puts him up to fourth position. Before you know it, this man is going to be battling, I think, for a taste of the lead. Look at the amount of real estate he's made up after that terrible altercation in race one. There he is, Scaife. He's got the leaders within view. Incredible determination from Scaife here today. Let's have a look at this replay of that oh, incident. On this on. is coming up into Penrite turn. Oh, it's just... Yeah, that was a definite touch there. And Radisic wasn't quite able to capitalise. Bargwan just gathered up. Let's have a look at what happened to Bow down at turn one. Oh, just up the inside of Tanda, and oh. 
hand of no. sort of shutting the door, good whack. I don't think that was an oil problem down there, Bess. No, I don't know. You can't uh, look it on the sea. You can't really see it, but you look at all the... Um, there is a bit of a sort of a dark grey look to it. Gee. <laughs> what a fender bender. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was continuing during the break, oh, or during our replay, I should say. Todd Kelly's gone off, and I'll tell you who went off with him very briefly was Mark Larkham and Rodney Forbes. Safety car is on the track. We've got a safety car out now. Let's have a look, another look at the replay. That's Todd no, Kelly that's... goes off. This is a bit further back in the field. Dougal Dougal McDougal. McDougal. Steve Reid, I think. Well, they're all coming off all sorts of different directions. They've had to pull the safety car out here. There's just too many cars lying around this racetrack. It's difficult trying to think who, who had gone off, wasn't it? There were so many of them. Well, some major dramas here. But this now tightens the field right up again. Done Scaife a big favour, is yeah. Mark Scaife, he was just within view of that leading trio. Now he's right up on the bumper of Paul Radisic. Barguana could be on course to repeat what he did here last year in terms of at least a race victory. The kid is on fire. Barguana a 124.99. Well, Barguana, if he wins this race, he is going to win the day. Incredible consistent performance. Last year he did it by taking pole and winning three heats, but by the unbelievable turn of events here this afternoon, the battle for survival for the nuggety 28-year-old will just bring top rewards once again. What an extraordinary effort by the young man from New South Wales, now lives in Victoria. Jason Barguana carrying our in-car camera. And there's his driver profile. Started in Formula V's, worked his way up. And he really has done it tough, Barguana. Ran Formula Ford and Formula Holden on a shoestring budget. Got into this team purely on merit. And hasn't he been a wonderful performer for Gary Rogers Motorsport over the years? Well, he's doing it here at the home test track. Jason Barguana, Paul Radisic in pursuit, but he's got plenty of speed in the Valvoline Cummins machine. Yeah, it looks like uh, Barks has got it under control. It's uh, lap time-wise, as soon as Radisic uh, ups the pace a bit, Barguana goes a little bit quicker, so... Uh... It looks, uh, looks like he's got it under control. This is quite a big surprise for the Stone Brothers <laughs> racing team. They qualified quite badly, these two, I must say. Both Beard and Longhurst didn't have a good time in terms of qualifying, but they have clawed their way up through the field in these cars, which are so well engineered as Beard gets up on two wheels. At the moment, Beard sits, it sits in fifth position. Tony Longhurst in the Caltex Haviland Ford in fourth. Stephen Johnson just in behind Beard. In sixth position, Jason Barguana at the moment leads the way at Winter and on course, providing nothing goes wrong for the youngster to take out this round. And don't forget, of course, if you want to check all the results in terms of V8 supercar racing, championship point scores, race reports and much, much more, go to the official site, v8supercar.com.au. And as I mentioned a little earlier, there is uh, a link there to the 10 website, 10.com.au. You can check out the RPM link there and much, much more. All our program information, don't miss it. Get on the web and check them out. We've been doing our sums on these incredible point situations. They're changing by the second, but here's the battle a bit further back in the field. Beyond these guys, there's Seaton and Tander coming charging through the field. Look at this look up the inside by Russell Engel on Neil Crompton. This is the battle for seventh position, or sixth position, I should say. Stephen Johnson in sixth, Crompton seventh, and Engel in eighth. Morris just behind in ninth. So tremendous battles right up down through the field. As I was saying before, this battle between Seaton and Tander, they're skiving their way through the field. They're right back at the rear of the top 20. But believe it or not, the way these points are falling at the moment, they're battling for the last position on the podium. I think Bog uh, Warner may have made a bit of a mistake last lap because Ranisic is right up in his backside. So a great forward Holden battle, the way it should be. At Winton Raceway this afternoon, Jason Barguana in the Valvoline Cummins Commodore, Paul Radisic in second. This is further back in the pack. This is the battle I was talking about. Glenn Seaton and Garth Tanner both coming to grief. And here's Craig Lowndes after his stop-go penalty, joining in for the fun. Right back central at Winton this afternoon. Nice. Such a change of events in the space of one race. There he is, the defending Shell Series champion, who was certainly looking good to really get right back into the thick of things in terms of the championship points for that stop go it's going to have been quite a, a costly thing for him up in front of them Anthony Tratton here Rodney Forbes there's Seaton and Tan
defender. It's been a consistent run too from Paul Radisic in the Shell Ford. He's currently second in this race. And he's a good chance for a podium spot this afternoon as well. So that's going to add some variety to the podium. Paul Radisic been out of luck so far this year. This could be his first podium in the year 2000. Four laps remaining for our race leader. On board with Glenn Seaton, and wouldn't he be kicking himself? I'm pretty sure there must have been something slippery on the track when he went off. There's all sorts of cars got to grief after him. But he's managed to gather it all up and get back into the battle. The be clear and simple telemetry takes you for a ride around Winton. Road speed on the left-hand side of the oh, screen. Down the inside. I think he did. That's your road speed on the left-hand side of the screen. Engine revolutions on the right. Brake applications in the middle, and there's your gear selection as well. So seat very physical as he muscles this 1,350 kilogram V8 Falcon around the tight twists and turns of winter. Fighting back in this championship, second in the order. Coming into this round behind Mark Scaife and looking poised for the top spot until drama struck in race three. Scaife, of course, at the moment. The gap, which was around about 158 points heading into today's round, is now reduced to 126 if things stay the way that they are. So Scaife is catchable in this championship by no means. is wrapped up yet as Russell moves down the inside on Neil Crompton. To the man in front of him, Stephen Johnson. So Russell has now moved up to seventh position. Yeah, he's been struggling all weekend, trying to get the power down of these slower corners. The car just not giving him the traction that he wants. And if your car is even 1% off from this level of competition, it's going to cost you a lot of time. So it's been a battle with the car as much as the opposition this weekend. But Engel's strongest performance so far is up to eight in heat three. This is Bargwan up. The walker in car shows you the way out of the back of the Valvoline Cummins Commodore. And as Barry mentioned, that gap has closed. Yeah, it just looks like um, Barks is quicker on the quick stuff and on the slow bits over the back of the circuit, um, Radisic makes up a lot of ground. Gary Rogers Motorsport has just about cut their own groove around this place. It's their local test track. It has been for several years. So you'd expect that the Valvoline Cummins operation will be strong here. They're certainly delivering two laps remaining for our race leader, Jason Barguana. Well on the way to repeating the result he earned here last year. Maybe not quite so spectacularly dominant, but an overall win is an overall win whichever way they come. Craig Lowndes is continuing to move through the field. Has moved up to 19th position, has, has now gone past Garth Tander and heading out after Glenn Seaton, who sits in 18th. But boy, oh boy, there's some names in this field that... As you can see on the bottom of your screen there that are really been quite surprising. Paul Romano has moved up to 14th. A storming drive from him. They've got a new Kiwi engine builder giving them a bit of a hand. And the car sounds like a NASCAR here this weekend. Got a very unique sound. Lark him up to 12th, which is great for the minor 10 driver. Rick Bates, who's made his return to V8 supercar racing here this oh! weekend. He's up to 24th. Look at this. The rat on the attack here at Winton as we count down towards the finish of round eight of the championship. If uh, Bargwa, if um, Radisic can get right up behind Bargwa and into the, the uh, right hander after, at the end of this straight here in front of our commentary box and be really, really close, I reckon he's got a chance of getting Bargs over on the slow section over the back there. Currently six forwards in the top 10. He's already second on the podium at the moment, Radisic. It's be a good, strong result for the Shell team that's been by their own admission, having a difficult year. There's some long faces down in that pit this weekend. They have not had a good run at all. This would be an immense confidence boost for Dean Orr, Dick Johnson, and the entire team down there. Important. Now look, at, look at this. This an important points boost too for Paul Radisic, currently fifth in the championship. We've got less than three kilometres remaining. The final lap of Winter Motor Raceway. Can Paul Radisic do it? That's the closest he's been in that section. There it makes a lot of ground up in the last, the next left. Around here, through the board credit the sweeper in the back. Yep, we'll keep an eye on him. Now, watch here. Radisic is quick through there, isn't he? Yeah, really, really. And when he comes. Fortunately for Barguana, the officials have deemed that flapping rear bodywork not to be too yeah. much of a danger. It would have been a tragedy if he got black flagged, had to get it, come into the pits to get it removed. So he's hanging on by his fingernails under maximum pressure from two times World Cup touring car champion Paul Radisic. Right, he's really very competitive day at Winter. Yeah, it's really.
really nowhere else now unless there's I don't think there's any chance now. Well, this is a much needed motivational boost for Jason Barguana. His best effort so far this year, a second place in the opening race at the GMC 400 and a third at the Clipsal 500 in race two. But Barguana at the moment, this is the last corner, Radisic the last roll of the dice. Barguana heading for the start finish line. And Barguana, a marvellous performance. He survives the battle at Winton. Barguana takes victory and the round. Radisic second, Mark Skate third. <laughs> Look at you. Shades of season 99 when Barguana, who's such an emotional character. Look at him. Well done. Winton is home turf for Jason Barguana. He has stamped his name on this place in V8 supercar terms, no doubt about it. That's good because he's had a really rough time this year and uh, it's nice when people, uh, you know, he's trying really hard and um, it's all come together for him. That's good. Mark Scaife's incredible run of wins and podium finishes came to an end at Winton Motor Raceway, but a great fight back by our championship leader. What it has done, maybe disappointed the Holden Racing Team fans, but it really has tightened up the championship. In third place today, it's been quite a varied podium, you've got to admit. He looked like he was heading for the top spot, but a bit of oil on that corner in the last race cost him dearly. Put your hands together for Glenn Seaton. Wow. Good to see you back up here, mate. It's... Uh... It's been a bit of a struggle the last couple of years, hasn't it? But, um, geez, that oil, what a costly mistake. It was, really. It uh, brought, uh, I think it was three of us undone, actually. And um, it is disappointing because I thought this was our day and uh, I was looking forward to taking that $10,000 off Jeff Pilates, the <laughs> president of Ford. But uh, today's not the day and hopefully Oran Park will be. Oran Park in the past has been great for us. But uh, thanks to the boys because uh, they did a sensational job. The car was on the pace this weekend and it really set the pace. But... Uh, uh, one of those things, it's uh, what you call it, is motor racing, and those things happen. That's the way it goes. Put your hands together, folks, anyway. Great effort for Ford Tickford driver. And for the first time since Barber Gallo last year, we've got two Fords on the podium. It's quite an extraordinary afternoon. Put your hands together. Second time in the Shell Championship Series, he's on the podium. Paul Radisic. Congratulations. Good to see you back up here. He said the car wasn't right throughout qualifying, but it just shows if you hang in there, you can get a result. Yeah, it sure is, and uh, you've got to keep at it, and uh, big thanks to, to the guys, DJR team, we worked hard to, uh, to improve the car, and, and we surely did, and uh, you know, I know Glenn's chasing a 10 grand, but so am I, <laughs> and uh, we're going to make it hard for him, so uh, you know, watch out for the next rounds, I feel we're, we're making great progress, and uh, you know, it's, I think this is going to say about Barguana, because uh, man, is he, this must be his lucky track or what, but um, <laughs> he drove extremely well. Put your hands together, folks, the rat is back, and there should be some more action from the Flying Kiwi at Oran Park. OK, now it's my pleasure to call on Ross Brody, the motorsport manager for Shell, the sponsor of this wonderful series. Second time in two years, our winner, Jason Bargwana. <laughs> Soak it up, son. It's a good feeling, isn't it? See, you, that's, that's a hard way to do it. Last year you were totally dominant. This year you came through from the back, but uh, you got my microphone called. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Clumsy stuff, isn't it? He had to come through from the back, uh, great result. Yeah, from the back, it wasn't that far back. Jeez, give me a break. Not, um, not, from, not from pole position like last year, though. No, Mark, look, that was fantastic. I mean, a great credit to the team, um, to Gary and all the boys. Uh, Greg's been working overtime on the car, and, and look, without the whole Valvoline and Cummins team, we wouldn't have been there. But, yeah, qualified ninth, and who'd have thought we'd be standing here with a trophy? All right. Now, can you continue this form at Oran Park? That's been a very happy hunting ground for Holton Racing Team. I think everyone's expecting them to be right back on the pace there. Yeah, well, um, you asked me this question last year, and I think I qualified 17th or something, so I'm not even going to answer that question, but thank God I was driving to Holden today, and especially the Valvoline Cummins one. I mean, um, you know, we're up on the podium again, and, and go the Holdens. We go the Holdens. Put your hands together, folks. Jason Barguana, the winner of Round 8 of the Shell Championship Series. Eight rounds down, and here is the revised championship score. Scaife still on top, but the gap has narrowed. 120 points now to Seaton. Garth Tan is sitting in third there. A couple of other movers for you. Greg Murphy now up into sixth position, and Russell Ingle has moved from sixth to seventh.
So uh, it's going to be a great day at Oran Park, I can tell you that one. But it's been an awesome day, Barry Sheen, here at Winton. Oh, fantastic day's racing. You know, the last race, you have to feel sorry for Seaton. I thought finally a Ford was going to win and that. But, and same goes for Tander as well, you know. But it was so nice to see Barguana win. You know, he's had a rough old year. But the great thing about Barguana is he's always been happy, you know, and that's, that's nice.